everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This kickstarts my Mother's Day series 2019. This is my third series now, so if you're new to my channel and you've never seen the Mother's Day series, then I will share a little drop down up here and you will be able to look at last year's and the year before as well because it's full of inspiration. So I love doing this. Um, I've done, I think I've got quite a nice variety of projects and I always feature a Tunnix tea cake project. Now if you're in the UK then you will know exactly what they are and as I always say they're a British institution they are just marshmallow wonderful tasting treats and I love them and I can consume quite a few in a day so <laughs> my mum loves them too so I always incorporate one project that has the Tunnix tea cakes featured in them. So I'll show you those in a moment. But this is the first project. So some of you will think, oh, she's using those daffodils again, because on Friday I done a daffodil easel card using these beautiful dies, which are from a magazine, and I'll share all the links and everything to that in my blog post. So I've used them again for this um, project, and I think it's really great. So this is called a stepper box card or a stepper gift box. So you take the lid off the top here, and this could be where you write your kind of card to and from, or you can just write, you know, something else. I might put another daffodil there, I'm not sure. And then as you open it, you have all of these. And inside are the Tunnix tea cakes. And then you can stand it up if you want to. The idea is it stands up, but there is four in this. And if you look there, you can see how it looks. And again, if you want to, you can decorate all of this here as well, which I might add a bit more too, I'm not entirely sure, but it's really fun to make, it's dead easy as well, and then it all just slides in, you can see there, perfectly, like so, and then you just pop your lid on the top, what a lovely gift, they might think they're getting perfume, <laughs> but I'm sure they prefer the chocolate when they see anyway what's inside, and there's the back there as well, you can see there all the detail in those dies, it's just absolutely stunning, so yeah, so this is what we're going to make, so let's get into the tutorial. So this is the die that I've used here. It's the Altenew Layered Daffodil Die Collection. This was free in a magazine. And you can see the pieces that you get to it there. So you get one, two, three, four pieces to the daffodil. And then these are the three pieces for your stems and your leaves. And it is gorgeous. So again, all the links to that will be shared in my blog post. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through what we need, I think, as we get to that part. Because there's a lot of kind of mats that you need to decorate, obviously, all those boxes and bits and pieces. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is do the main kind of piece that opens up with the boxes. So I've already done my daffodils here. Um, I've got all that ready to go. I've even stamped my little sentiment as well. So we can just, you know, make this as quick as we can and, um, and easy to follow. So for your main case, you need a piece that's 11 and a quarter by six and one eighth. Now, if you're using 11 inch letter paper, that's fine. All it will mean is that this back piece here will be a quarter inch short. So you could extend it with some colored paper, you could put a nice decorative trim on the end, or just keep it slightly shorter. It's not really gonna make too much of a difference. You could alternatively get rid of that panel altogether, but it would mean that you've got that kind of exposed bit there because that's where it would literally just join up it would just have the four sides one two three four so you wouldn't you know it wouldn't have a corner like this kind of thing that just kind of keeps it all compact so have a look watch the tutorial and then you can decide okay so we are going to score at two and a quarter at four and a half at six and three quarters and at nine. Okay, so you should have five panels that are two and a quarter wide. And then you can just burnish all of those. And that's the case. So again, really, really straightforward, nice and easy to do. And you can see now how that will fold like that and that piece. So again, if you haven't got that, you're just gonna have those four pieces like that minus this piece. Okay, so this is the inside, that's the outside. So now I can decorate that. So what I've got here is I've got five pieces for the outside. So I'm going to do it the same. The inside's going to be slightly different. So these are these panels here. So I've got one, two, three, no, it's four, isn't it? Let me just double check. Or is it five? No, it's five. Yeah, of course, because it's going over that one there. So I knew I was right. I just wanted to double check. So these all measure two by 
five and seven eighths of an inch. So they're just coming in by quarter of an inch on both sides. So you'll need five pieces in one design and then you'll want five pieces in another design. For the inside, again, exactly the same measurements, two by five and seven eighths of an inch. And um, yeah, it's entirely up to you. You might want to do like a nice silver mirrored cardstock in this side, in this size, and then drop down again. So you've got a mat and a layer, it's entirely up to you. But I'm gonna go ahead now and get all of these stuck down. Okay, so that's my case now all covered. And also this is on 300, the white cardstock 300 GSM smooth paper mill direct cardstock. And I printed the free downloads from the same magazine onto that same cardstock. So, you know, you've got a 300 GSM, a 300 GSM and another 300 GSM. And this is pretty strong. So yeah, it looks great now. And you can see how that all holds together like so. Okay, next we want to make our boxes so you need four boxes for the inside it's entirely up to you again once you see how this is done you may just need two or three or you might want to add more I've done them so that they hold those Tunnix tea cakes specifically so you need four pieces that are five and one eighth of an inch squared okay and on all four sides of every one you want to score at one inch um, you want to score at one and a half inches so one and a half one and a half, one and a half, and one and a half. Do that on all four pieces, okay? Then you just wanna fold and burnish all of your sides. Okay, so now you'll have your four, then we just need to do a little bit of cutting. So you wanna cut down on one of the sides, it doesn't matter which one, because they're all the same. You just want to cut down to the first score line like that, okay? Then rotate it so what you've done is now facing away and you've got the opposite side and just cut down again. Like so. Then with the four outer squares you just want to take wedges off of them like so, just so you don't get any side pieces kind of hanging over the top like so and again do the same on the other side okay like so so you just want to do that on all, all the other pieces okay so all those pieces will now be ready then with one of your corner pieces Oh, got a bit there, get rid of that. You want to add some glue to the top. And the reason I chop and change glues is because this is a strong tacky glue, so it's perfect for surface areas. But when I'm doing corners, sometimes I use that if I forget, but I like to use this one because it dries clear and it doesn't dry tacky. So if you do get anything that kind of oozes out the side, you can just wipe it away and it will just dry clear and won't be sticky. So yeah. That's why I do that, so that you just want to bring up the side like so. So again, I'll show you on this one. Put in there a glue. Bring that one down and that side up. So you're creating your little box and you've got really nice right angles there. Okay, do the same on the other side. Okay, and there you will have your little box. And let me just bring in here. This is what they look like. So you get six tea cakes in here. My Tunnox, and now that fits in there perfectly. I would love to be given this. Just this, actually. <laughs> okay, so you just want to do that now on all the others. Okay, so I've done all my little boxes, then you need to just add the decoration on these. It's easier to do them when they're loose like this rather than stuck down. But if I open it up, you only need to decorate three sides, so one, two, three. So in total, you need three, six, nine, twelve pieces of the size that I'm going to give you now. And then we can stick them down afterwards. So these pieces measure 
make sure because I had to cut one slightly different. Let's just check here. Yeah, see those are smaller, whereas I think I preferred more coverage. Yeah, so I'm going to change mine around a little bit. See, I prefer that one. So, is it, I mean, you know how to do your sizings for this, but if you want to do the same ones as me, these are two by one and three eighths of an inch. Okay, and you'd need nine pieces. So you want to choose what's going to be your back. Now, I tend to go for where you folded in your pieces, so you can see my folds are there and there. So I'm going to have that on be stuck to this piece here and then the other fold piece will be facing the front. So the bits where there's no folds are going to be my sides. That's how I'm going to do it. But if you've got a, you know, a preference, so you can see there, that's how mine are going to be. So that's the bit that you're going to see at the front. Everything else will be stuck down at the back. So I'm going to go and get all these stuck down. Okay, so that's all my sides covered now on the four little boxes. They can go on here. So what you want to do, easiest way to do this, is you're going to have one like that, one like that, one like that, and one like that. But in order to make sure you get them perfect, you want to start with this bottom one first. So you don't want to do the first panel, you want to go straight into your second panel at the bottom here. So I'm going to grab my glue, you want to cover all of the back there and then pop it in between the score lines right down to the bottom and then lift it up and then you can make sure it's flush on the you know your mat here on the bottom and then just kind of stick it there get your bone folder or something in there just to really make sure that glue spread out and again just make sure that it does sit nice and flush so when you wrap that all around you see that you get it completely flat. All right, so that's what you want to kind of aim for. That's the most important one because it's from that one that we then line everything else up with. So, and that the measurements I've given you will allow these to perfectly sit on top of each other right to the very top. So again, if I bring that all around, you see there it all marries up nice and flush at the top, okay? So you do want to make sure that you get that first one in. Perfect, okay, so next, pop some glue on this one and you're gonna fold this one over like that and then, if I keep that up like that, you're gonna pop that one down so it sits on top. Then pop that one back and then you can again go in and make sure that it's nice and straight because the idea is, is they've got to obviously slot in underneath each other and you don't want them catching. So if you do it like that, then you know that you've got it nice and straight and also the you know the exact distance that it needs to be. See there now that works really well and it doesn't catch or anything. Then grab the next one and you want to do the same again. So you're going to bring both over. So now if I bring it up like that, hang on. <laughs> so we're going to be sticking on. So you've done your second one. So that's the first panel. You've just stuck on the second, the third. Now we're sticking on the fourth. So you want to bring that over. I'm trying to do it so that you can see on the screen. So again, lining it up like so, and then I can drop it back out. And just make sure that it's coming up, okay, like so. Okay, you can see now how great it starts to look. It really is fun. Then your last one, and the last one, just bring that one down and sit that one in. You just want to make sure you get it lined up with the top there. And I think catches, so then you can just roll them all in. Go around, kind of squeeze it, make sure they're all nice and stuck in. You should have that shape 
and it becomes a really strong, compact, lovely little you know box. It's a great little keepsake as well because once the goodies have been used and eaten, it's a nice little storage idea as well. You know, you can use that to pop little bits of jewellery in. You could use it in your craft room just to store some little trinkets and embellishments and stuff. So I think it's got quite a few uses. But there you have it. So where you've got this piece on the back, obviously decorate that however you want. So where that's on the back there, this is the front. So this is now what I'm going to decorate. So I've got these daffodils here. Now if you missed my card last week, or you want to know how to put these together and assemble them, just check out that tutorial and I'll share that up here for you, just to show you how to put these together. But I want to go for something similar to this, because I just, I love that. I love working in threes and I just think these daffodils just look really nice like that. So I am going to roughly stick them in the same way. So I'm going to stick these down first and then I just kind of pop the green leaves underneath. So I've got it hanging off the side there because again I just think that looks quite nice. This one's all stuck down so I'll just pop my glue over all of it. And that one's going to be go over there. And then this one here just turning the other way. And that one is going to go like so. Or do I want it like that? Or like that? Mm, yeah, it was about there, wasn't it? There we go. That I do. Like so. And then these now you just kind of add in wherever. So. Okay, and then I've got my Happy Mother's Day that I've already stamped and cut out and then I've just popped some foam adhesive and a little bit of glue and then just have it on an angle like so. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? They look so, so pretty. So that's your box all done. Now we need to do the lid. Put that all on top. And you have a gorgeous gift box and a wonderful gift. And there's that one there. And if you want to know what's inside one, because this one's been sat on my desk, I'm going to show you. So you open up the foil and you have this lovely dome. And inside, it's full of marshmallow with a biscuit base. <laughs> and it's delicious. So I'm going to finish this. I finished the tutorial. I'm going to have a cup of tea. I hope you've enjoyed the first of my Mother's Day series. I've got some really lovely treats for you this week. So tune in, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another tutorial. See you later. Bye.